I've got to turn my mic on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, day number 10. And uh, what do we have on the thumbnail there? We have JW Org and we have a open can of maggots. Now, have you ever had that happen to you? You know, where you went to open something and it's just all full of maggots. It can happen. Now, one of the things that we want to be careful about is buying dented cans. You see, sometimes cans get knocked off a shelf, they get dented, and they get pinholes in them. And we can't see the pinholes with the naked eye, but those pinholes allow this to happen. And this is what's happened within Jehovah's Witness religion. It's got pinholes, it's got knocked off the shelf, gets dented. It got dented when Rutherford took over. It, uh, he changed everything from what Russell did, the founder, Russell. They believed in Christmas. You know, they didn't shun like they, they do now. And then it gets dented again. Uh, Nor was another president that took over and st started uh, this whole blood campaign. Another big dent. So you get all these holes in the can and pretty soon you got a can of maggots. And that's what's happening uh, within the organization today. You, uh, you open up that can and, oh, we don't know what's in it. You see, up until now, the can has been left on the shelf closed. The lid's closed. No one's been able to open the lid. And in Norway, we've demonstrated, they've demonstrated in Norway that there's more inside this religion than meets the eye. They cannot just simply stand there and hide behind freedom of religion. And then behind the freedom of the religion, they do all kinds of intolerance towards others. You see, you see the, the judges and the courts are opening up the can. And what may happen here, uh, what, what could happen in this trial, uh, the verdict uh, is, is, is going to be out in about four weeks or so. We'll keep you posted on that when the news comes out. But uh, whatever happens, they can appeal it and they can try to appeal it in a European court because because uh, all these other lands um, they're saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are, are a good charity religion in the European Union so this could open the can up open a can up and then all uh, this could open up further investigation and then all of these other countries start opening the can up in their country and finding out holy smokes it's a dented can it has holes in it and uh, it is full of maggots so let's see what this trial pulls out, and we'll get right after it here. Uh, we're a uh, summary of day 10, end of the trial here. Um, we are January 19th, that's when this day was held. Jehovah's Witnesses versus Norway. The state attorney is live, live, Inger, Jon Gabrielsen. Gabrielson and Watchtower's attorney is Risdale uh, give their they give their closing arguments okay it is the final day uh, I'll just switch my um, screen here okay first of all we'd like to thank avoid JW for this uh, news article I'll post a link in the descriptions below as always so we're going to get right into the article. It is the final day of this strenuous yet enlightening trial. Day 10, January 19th, 2024. The trial is coming to an end with their closing arguments and we will hear the final verdict in about four weeks as I summarized for reminders on who is who. Rizdell is a Jehovah's Witness lawyer and Gabrielsen is a state, Norway's state lawyer. She's referred to as Liz, or Liv, Liv. Gabrielson points out strict rules of organization. She says, according to Ben Elder, a Jehovah's Witness who testified the previous day, the organization sees increasing activity among so-called anti-cult organizations in Europe. According to Elder, these are organizations that have been created with the purpose of attacking religious minorities, by claiming that they are second-rate religious and harmful or second-rate religions and harmful to society. The same rhetoric is repeated in every country with the same wording, Vartland News. 
Gabrielson starts by ripping apart the jumbled and ever-changing denial of the organization's practice of shunning, saying that the exceptions regarding special incidents allow contact doesn't mean there is no shunning. She emphasizes the heavy burden on those who leave and how the right to leave the religion freely is breached. She then points out how anyone especially recognized in the LQBTQ community has even worse consequences when it comes to their family. The Jehovah's Witness organization is strictly against the LGBTQ organization. If you want to be deemed worthy enough for baptism as a member, you are not allowed to pursue any feelings of the opposite sex, nor identify as other. Risdale, the Watchtower's lawyer, seems distraught today, attempting to speak minor details, seemingly trying to get the state to calm down, to calm down the line of statements they are making. The abuse of children. Gabrielson explains how there is a fear for the kids being raised and taught, and these teachings based on the disciplinary actions of a judicial committed, marking, being disfellowshipped, and how everyone outside the organization is labeled worldly or bad associations, and are taught by publications, videos, etc., on how not to associate with them. And that's, that's exactly the way it is. Former testimonies are brought up expressing their pain. Left, we see uh, Risdale, JW Lawyer, left. And right is Jan Nielsen, former JW and politician, testified in court. Gabrielson highlights the previous testimonies of the former Jehovah's Witnesses on how shunning disfellowshipping process affected them even as minors. And this is because a judicial process, a judgment on a sin, the local elders based on their view, needs disciplinary action is very stressful and traumatizing for minors and adults. Several of the former Jehovah's Witnesses talked about this happening before 18 years of age. According to the law, spreading information, marking, harsh judgment, avoiding throughout the congregation is abuse. Good law. The isolation. Connection to the family is a basic need for any child's mental health. Isolation of minors hurts their mental development and connections that need to be built up through a secure environment. Even being reproved, which is a private or public disciplinary action that can happen to you in the congregation, no matter the age after baptism, creates a wall of judgment and separation from the rest of the congregation meaning the minor may be avoided or treated differently by their friends and family. Just, just for actually being involved in this elders meeting. After baptism, the threat of losing this connection can deeply affect a child's development. Like the fear of, of being ostracized for slipping up, maybe doing something at school. It's hard to say. Maybe, maybe even getting involved. Let, let's say you're in school and maybe you wanted to sit in the classroom and participate in a little bit of the Christmas, you know, because of baby Jesus. You know, that's part of the Bible scene, right? It's in the classroom. And you could justify that yourself, but it got back to the elders. You're baptized. Uh, they would classify you as a, uh, having a part of idolatry. That's a fact. It's in the elders book. Now, the Norway attorneys in a closing argument. The Norwegian law says that all religions must be supported equally. This is what Risdale intends to agree with regarding the funding they have lost five million US dollars. Yet the state argues that this just means all religions must have an equal right to apply. And there's a possibility of them being unapproved if they don't follow the terms. It's quite simple. The state shows that there's nothing in the Constitution that says there can be no terms at all for funding. The intention, it seems, has always been to set some terms for taxpayers' payout. 
The state has room for considering how the funding shall be organized, and it has to be the same for all religions. They can't have different terms for Christian groups at Muslim group and than Muslim groups, etc. This means that equal treatment is secured by the fact that all religions have to meet the same terms. And you see, folks, if if they if they laxed for Jehovah's Witnesses, then all of a sudden there's other cults that are going to start up. They'll be shunning. They'll be for, forming little compounds. They'll be segregating. And they'll say, well, no, no, you're allowing Jehovah's Witnesses to do it. Why can't we do it and get charity money as well? You see, so the state has rules and Jehovah's Witness religion did not pass the driver's test. So it didn't get, didn't get it, uh, the, the status, the charity status. They can still practice. They can still go to meetings. And rightfully, they should have to pay taxes on those buildings. They shouldn't have any tax exemptions at all, Jehovah's Witnesses, because they don't measure up. They don't, they don't pass the test. It's quite simple. Now, this does not mean that all religions can ignore the rules and demands and still get their money. Gabrielson starts to seem irritated at Rizdil's interruptions and minor details. So she has to stop her argument. And she not once interrupted them. She allowed them a whole day and a half to get up there and, and, and spell out lies. And she just sat there and took it. Never, never butted in. But now... She's telling the truth, and the Jehovah's Witness lawyer is poking, poking, poking. That's, that's what they do in court. Uh, they then go through the ECHR verdicts JW versus Rizdal have used and how they are irrelevant to the case. All the Jehovah's Witnesses side and state agree that you cannot exercise pressure to force someone to change a religion. But can, can you then be allowed to use extensive force to exercise pressure to stop someone from re leaving the religion? Aha, you see, it's a double-edged sword. You see, the Jehovah's Witnesses want the cake and the icing. You can't have both. People have to have freedom of will to come in, or else you wouldn't get new people coming in, right? And likewise, people have to have the freedom to leave. Uh, and maybe they want to try out different religions, try out the Catholics, try out the Mormons, try out the Muslims. You know, maybe they're spiritual. They want to search around a little bit. People should not be shunned within a community by any of the religions for wanting to do that, wanting to explore. You see, that's part of growing, learning, and getting more knowledge. Okay, we move on. Gabrielson talks about the freedom of parents regarding what they choose for their child, which will always at some point have to be put up against a child's right to protection and integrity when those go up against each other, like blood transfusions. How can you decide for that child to lose that child's life over some doctrine that the cult has? Doesn't make sense. As a source, Jan Nielsen stated regarding the child's right to protection, your right to swing your fist freely will always have to be considered against my nose right, right not to be broken. Yeah, good argue, uh, a good uh, statement, makes a point. Now, the closing arguments. The state says that JW is free to decide the membership rules. They are free to deny LGBTQ, deny those who disagree to be members, and deny people to vote, who vote. They are free to create their own rules. Not an issue here. It's not an issue. They can do all of that. You see, it's not like Russia. Russia, you can't do that. They can't go door to door. They can't talk about it. But in Norway, you can do all those things. Here's the point. The point, though, is to let people live and leave freely. Let them live and leave freely. That's it. You see, Jehovah's Witnesses are trying to be like Russia within their religion. They're trying to hold everyone to their constraints. And I, uh, I may be out of turn in saying that. Um, Russia, I think, maybe would be, you know, I don't even want to get into the political element of it because what do I know? I'm an ex-JW. I, I know nothing of politics, and I should. I should know something about politics. We should be free to do that without being judged by the religion. Now, the point is here is they cannot just do whatever they want. People can't. The organization cannot have these strict rules and at the same time point punish harshly to those who don't want to live under those strict rules. 
that's that's the point. There there are also rules on how a religion can apply pressure and force against its members. And improper action and undue influence are not allowed. Lots of ECHR verdicts, European verdicts, so they pulled out a lot of that, are related to this. Regarding matrimonial privilege, their religion ceremony is not broken. It is only the civil, the legal aspect of the matrimony that has to be adjusted. And that is the state's right to set those rules for legally handling it. Okay. Uh, Jan Nelson, former Jehovah's Witness, expresses his opinion on the closing argument of the trial. Here it is. He says, for myself and other ex-witnesses, it is not primarily about winning in court, says Jan Nelson. Whether Jehovah's Witnesses lose state support is a trivial matter. Many of those who have testified in court have never told their story that way before, he says that this is in itself has had a great significance. And he also says that he and other ex-witnesses have found it strange to hear how Jehovah's Witnesses present themselves as a vulnerable minority. I found that very strange. Because on an individual level, we are the ones who have been the minority. Individuals in the face of a worldwide organization that has billions on its books and millions of members, yeah, Nilsson also says that he thinks the government lawyer has done a good job. And according to him, they have remained calm and resisted what he sees as a strategy of obfuscating. Obfuscating? I'm going to look that word up. Okay, good old Google. Obfuscate. Obfuscate. I don't use that word much, but... It says to render obscure, unclear, or unintelligible. The spelling changes will deform some familiar words and ob obfuscate their, oh, there's another word, their origins. <laughs> bewilder, bewilder someone. There you got it. Uh, the JWs like to bewilder. And they throw all of this Satan, Satan, Satan. Oh, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. But their Bible isn't complete. It has so many errors. We have that on lots of videos. Now, good word. Uh, according to him, according to Jan, uh, they have remained calm. The lawyers, the state's lawyers, they resisted what seems as a strategy of obfuscating or confusing people and confusing by highlighting irrelevant points and examples. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses want to angle this as a matter of religious persecution. That's what they're doing here. There I feel that the lawyers have been good at saying, relax, it's not about that. It's about a state support scheme. So Vartland article uh, done in court, Jehovah's Witnesses want to frame this as a case of religious persecution. Links to the article are here. And that could be another article that we will run at another date. So that brings an end to, to today. Um, today we have... It's been an inspiring day, and um, we see that the can of maggots got opened, and that's good. That has to happen in court. Um, it has to happen somewhere. It has to start somewhere where they actually grab that thing and open the lid, look at the elder's book, and really see what's going on in that religion. So thanks again, folks. And remember, in this in this video, put as many comments as you can regarding children um, being shunned. Children being shunned. If you've had children being shunned or you were a part of that scheme, I know I was. I had my children were shunned because they were disfellowshipped. And it's really hard on them. Hard on them psychologically. Hard on them to this very day. And I don't think they've even began to undo some of this stuff. So folks, this is just the start of it, but the more we put comments in, the more we show the world that this is not an isolated case as Rizdell, the lawyer, the JW lawyer, and Ben Elder has lied in court over and over again. They've lied, 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 and said it's just this is just a few activists, this is no big deal. We're the victims. You see, they're trying to make themselves the victims. Folks, by you guys putting comments in, it shows that there's victims all over the world. So thanks again. You've been a great audience. And remember, keep living your life with love. Bye for now.